Hello, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina. Thank you so much for joining. Today we're going to go ahead and get a card to preside over the reading from the Mixed Kali and Kuan Yin deck. Almost these two both want to come out, so we'll just take them and see what's on the bottom. Dance of the Butterfly Queen from the Kuan Yin deck. Number five. So Dance of the Butterfly Queen, it talks quite a bit about grace, delicacy, maneuvering, um, and even just movement and, and flow within a situation, not letting things weigh you down and bind you up that have perhaps done so in the past. And... Uh, we have 10 Sisters of Light. One of the ladies in the foreground has her stuff out, so we'll take that and cover that for you. This is talking about having lived one's life through many different incarnations, and almost all of them are playing some type of instrument, and these are all depictions from that deck. There may be a few that appear a bit different. And some are in the light, some are more in the darkness and obscurity. And it's talking about how, and this is number 33, I'm just noticing, master number 33. I see that as uh, self-mastery. And this card is talking about having all of those experiences ends up coming into an, an accumulation of knowledge and the ability to then flow through things with that knowledge. And so there's something about convergence that has been coming up a few times in the last few readings with the celestial card from another deck. Ooh, I just saw that one. And um, I'm kind of feeling that this is also, it came out yesterday too, where there's this coming together and in the, on the May 1st reading, the Beltane reading, about the coming together of merging of knowledge from the cosmos, from astrology or whatever your interest, hobbies, or specialty might be, doing some type of research and also some type of meditative, prayerful engagement with your higher self it's like the merging of self with soul self higher self with god self with source with other entities through mediumship there's this convergence of information that can sometimes lead us to be distracted and going in multiple directions or when we can kind of sit with it in some type of meditation or prayer or envisioning, then it enables us to find the common thread and to then pull on that thread. And that reminds me of a reading a few days back, maybe a week or more back, where it was like unraveling a sweater. Um, yeah. So many plays on words, sweater, the sweat lodge. Anyways, uh, number 22, master number 22, Duma Vita, Duma Vati. So this one is much more intense, having been through the fires. Yeah, the, the sweat lodge. Having come through the fires like the phoenix and um, having seen the darkness, the dark side of life and human nature and beyond and even the earth you know the earth and its storms it's raining out today it's a gentle gorgeous rain and it has a, a different hue to the sky when there's just a little bit of sun piercing through and it becomes almost that misty filtered light there's something in this card about um, really seeing through the darkness, being able to pierce through the veil. It's that dark priestess energy where the experiences are seen and honored. 
I do like to read from this deck. It's um, I'm not as proficient with this deck as yet. So this one is saying, Beloved Mother who dwells in the smoke, who presides over the most difficult transitions, she who knows that certain endings are unavoidable, they are necessary predecessors to radical reinvention. Her presence brings the message that though disappoint, disappointment, defeat, or loss, and the negative repercussions of such experiences may cause suffering for a time, they will not limit your future happiness. They are a means for opening as yet unrecognized pathways for fulfillment. Your trust must be unconditional at this time. And later, you shall see that everything has worked out for the absolute best. So the smoke is reminding me that many of you may already do this or may benefit from some type of a smudge with some type of an herbal. Um, it's reminding me, I kind of wanted to do a little feature on that. So it can be a number of things. A lot of individuals will use white sage or mugwort black sage. Um, what else? Sweet grass is a good one. Also resins like amber resin, frankincense is incredible. And in fact, um, I don't know the correct term. Is it antimicrobial? Anyways, it can assist when we inhale some of the vapors to soothe a cough. I believe that is something that's coming through um, and helps to assist and induce meditative envisioning and deeper meditation. Um, and there was another one. It doesn't matter. Uh, go ahead and look that up if that's something that calls to you or if you are looking to re-engage with that. So before going on, I did a pre-shuffle and laid out some cards. And I wasn't sure if this message was just for me. So I'm just going to give you just hopefully a quick little synopsis of what I'm looking at. And then we're going to push all that back in together and see where the reading wants to go on camera. So I'll just quickly go through the cards. We've got a set of four, then three, then two, then under the deck in an inverted pyramidal type structure. So we have 38, Remembrance, 32, Merkaba, which we did have the 33, remember, so that's in order. <clears throat> oh, and we have 33 here. Anyways, <laughs> the third card is number one, Root Chakra. Then the fourth card in the top row is 27, Fertility. Then we have 33, Miracle, 35, Perception, 39, Romantic Love. And then this number, um, the third row down, 28, Gaia, 44, Universal Love. And then under the deck, we had 36, Prosperity, covering 26, Empowerment. So off the bat, I'm seeing that there are a couple of number sequences. I see 26, 27, 28 right here, as well as 32, 33, 33, and then skipping to 35, 36, skipping to 38, 39, and we have several master numbers. We got the 22, two times for the 33 and a 44. So number sequences are coming in and possibly many of you will also see number sequences. Uh, feel free to drop those in the, in the comments section. So what I was getting from this is <clears throat> remembering your goal for reaching for the higher, reaching for the better, reaching for a better feeling thought than dwelling in the smoke and the shadow of what could be temporary suffering, like ripping the Band-Aid off. We don't need to lament the bandage all day long and say, oh, ripping that Band-Aid off was so terrible for like a week or a year, right? It seems stupid. But how often will we do that with offenses from other people? Maybe not everybody. Certain people 
will cling to those things and certain people will gloss them over and be very uncomfortable with recognizing that intense emotions and just kind of bury that. <clears throat> but these things have a way of weaseling, wiggling their way back into situations. So it's about remembering the expansion point, remembering where we're going and collecting ourselves. Recollecting the center helps the expansion um, because everything that's going on within will be mirrored back to us, called in from our experience, from the external, from without. So grounding can be very, very powerful right now and really strengthening the foundation of or the basis of where we want to go and recognizing and forgiving the past. Forgiving is a, is a trigger word, I understand. Um, I'm not talking about forgiving the, um, the atrocities, but forgiving the idea that those things had to happen because now we're not there. We've already peeled off that Band-Aid. And perhaps some of us have been in long-standing situations where we haven't been able to correct something. Um, others will have just done so. And so the issues are still fresh. And there's definitely a lot of healing that can happen through discuss discussing these things, through therapeutic venting, but... It's like make it into an art and a mantra of your healing and not of your victimization. And then we have this fertility card talking about that's how we really start to work on that center and be able to grow and bloom and progress, being able to take in the appropriate nourishment even from suffering to cleanse and purify and detoxify whatever comes into the body. And so miracle perception and romantic love, uh, there's, there is um, a choice point here where we can perceive of the miracle that we are in process of, of manifesting here perhaps in romantic love, but for some of you, since this is a general reading, this might happen with friends, family, group dynamics, whatever it is, or in the life of someone that you know or care for. So there's this perception in romantic love that seems to be triggering. It's triggering something, and perhaps it's one of those issues that continues to rise up or somebody says something quite innocent and you're like, oh yeah, that reminds me. There was that thing I should be worried about or afraid about or, or irritated by from the past that wants to come back in. It's like the little spores from, from the dandelions that you can blow uh, when you make a wish. It's like those spores go who knows where on a windy day. Um, but those of us who want a cultivated garden bed wouldn't take a bunch of dandelion spores and blow them all over there. Well, dandelions are medicinal anyways, but generally we wouldn't want a bunch of dandelions sucking the nutrients out from our potential harvest at the end of the season. And in that way, it's like, are we going to cultivate a bunch of weeds, medicinal or not, in our garden that would deplete the situation, suck the nourishment out of the miracles and, and stop our miracle from really coming to fruition? Because this fertility card is very much like the bloom and the blossom and the blossoms are the predecessors of the fruit. So then we move into Gaia and universal love. It's like, <clears throat> it's kind of like reminding us that we're surrounded by love, that things are moving in the right direction at all times. But then there's that thing that's bugging us, right? Or someone. And 
with this empowerment of prosperity here under the deck, <clears throat> it's like, to me, it was talking about empowering our manifestation or our harvest or our perspectives here is partly the, um, it's happening through our ability to first perceive of our needs, perceive of what that trigger is, working through ABC, and then in the moment, in the peaceful way, being able to say, okay, well, at the heart of this, this is what I require. It's not about what I want and what I desire necessarily. It's about what I need. So if your emotional needs, financial needs, or your, um, your worth and well-being are on the table, such as being skipped over for some type of raise or promotion, or um, others are being treated in a specific way by this individual, and then they come to you and invent and ask you for freebies or anything else and just take it in stride that your energy is at their disposal, then it came to me that we have to identify and then to speak and voice our needs in the moment. And all of a sudden it shifts the dynamic on its head. And all of a sudden it's like, yes, that's what I mean. I said what I mean. And now I feel better because I have no longer um, been complicit in my exploitation. And so I was asking spirit, so is this about um, asking for my needs in a situation to be met in a peaceful way? I said, if so, I will find the voice card in my deck. And I, no kidding, grabbed it and went, there it is, using your voice. It's a powerful tool. It's a powerful manifester. And under the deck is gifted. You are gifted. And um, that means that you are highly employable. You are highly sought after. You are very effective and efficient and skilled at whatever you bring to the table because of who the heck you have been in the past, all of these individuals, and your voice with all of these musical instruments here. It's like singing your soul song. And as long as we're still in judgment, that song, that voice isn't coming forward in the way that it could, would, or should. So let's go ahead and give everything a new shuffle and see, well, I'll leave those um, Oracle cards up there <clears throat> presiding over the reading. Let's see about what code cards want to come to perhaps supplement or shift around that message. So let's leave that, that irritation behind us and look at what is coming into being because with prosperity empowered on the bottom of the deck, it seems like this is a true turning point where we're like, hey, I know I'm good at this stuff too. Why aren't you asking me to do that thing? Or why aren't you giving me the benefits or blah, blah, blah. And maybe they think that you are just fine working on the front lines. Allowance. Under the deck, coherence. So this is um, allowing yourself to be seen, allowing yourself to be understood fully by speaking yourself fully, utilizing the voice to, um, yeah, it says the frequency of coherence supports our ability to harmonize the frequency of the heart with the frequency of the mind for an optimal ability to create a reality that we desire and require. So let's see. Allowance, earth. So something very material, very 3D mundane is um, we're allowing that to help us to shape, shift, or shift 
the shape of the environment, the um, the way that we engage with that is flavored by the previous exchanges. Because if there's anything repressed or underexpressed or underemployed in this case, we've been complicit, we've been allowing. But allowance invites us to be open with whatever comes our way without judgment, without opinion, without fear, and without resistance. When we allow, the universe becomes our partner in the wondrous dance of existence and expansion. Glorious. There's prosperity. There we go. So the earth is activating our deep connection to this physical plane by showing us the beauty of all the aspects of our great mother and revealing the more ethereal, spiritual aspects of our nature. So I'm kind of feeling that there are parts of you that have been overshadowed by the necessity of the moment, such as needing to hold a job, needing the paycheck just for an instance. But as we allow ourselves to expand without judgment, opinion, or fear, or projection from others, perhaps, then we can really start working with our earthly skills and knowledge and applying them to something fundamental or foundational in our life. And we can start really seeing some, some um, turning point whereby I don't know if we're, if everybody here would be on a, a similar trajectory as far as like what we're working on, but some type of interest or hobby is able to either be a side hustle or something that is um, applied in a new way to a group, for instance, or in a group, or um, like, let's say you are a skilled personal trainer and nutritionist, as well as some other things in your workplace is like, oh, well, you know, we've been thinking about taking on a, a wellness individual to um, reduce our insurance premium. So it's going to save them money and they are going to take on somebody. Why not put yourself up for that position, right? So that seems very earthly because it's talking about the body. It's um, a skill that <clears throat> gets everybody else deeply into their body. But it is, it's a deep connection. And I was also feeling this morning as I was preparing myself to come to the reading, you know, getting myself ready. I was talking to myself, I guess to my all of myself about the body's intuition and the way that our body talks to us and how I can feel and sense and understand coherently the changes in my body chemistry based upon the foods and the things that I'm craving, the desires. And so are we feeding a craving or are we really soothing and um, applying ourselves to what we really require and desire? Because our desires can be skewed based on many things. Yeah, coherence is still on the bottom there. So perception coming out again. What we allow to, to come our way and do we believe that um, we can move beyond our comfort zone? It says, supports our natural curiosity, moving us beyond our comfort zone to find the edges of what we perceive as real and to take a good, hard, deep look at it, which reminds me with this earth card too. It was like that overshadowing of our more ethereal gifts. It's like those things also can come into play because if you're that personal trainer, nutritionist, perhaps you're also a body intuitive. And if you have an intuition, that can lead you to research something quite specific. And I've had that with myself and with others where I'm like, you know, maybe you need something for your kidneys. And I'll look it up and I'm like, oh, well, it says here that these can be symptoms. Those are some of the things that you're experiencing, right? Maybe you should flush out your system a bit. I don't know. It's just a for instance. And maybe you do, right? More hydration. Remembrance, 38. That one was also in there. 
And so we'll leave the code cards there. So something that we're remembering, we're able to perceive it differently to allow our um, accumulated experience and the narrative of where we've come from, where we're going, what we're capable of doing, how and who we're willing and able to show up as, like moving beyond the comfort zone of <clears throat> doing those normalized, widely expected type of approaches, and then saying to a so-called normie, well, I'm an intuitive psychic, so what? You know, maybe, maybe they won't be appalled, right? Those are just some some ideas. But remembering who we are and applying those things and not being afraid of judgment from without. Because if we're judging ourselves from within, then others will judge us. If we're like, well, I'm, I consider myself an intuitive and you know maybe even a little bit psychic but maybe those things are just lucky. Then we're discounting. Then we're we're taking it back a notch and somebody would be like, oh, is that right? I see power on the bottom of the deck. Look at that solar plexus, that confidence and charisma and uh, bright, sunshiny energy here with that mother of pearl look to it as well. And I'm definitely seeing both a butterfly as well as the green man in that imagery. I don't know if you'll be able to perceive of it, but the, um, it's the earth. It, the green man is, uh, nature, correct? Maybe coming out because of the Beltane influences going through at this time. But <clears throat> there's a way that when we say it confidently and, and powerfully in our own way, well, I'm, I'm pretty psychic. I can, I can do some things uh, that, that blow my hair back and, and blow my mind. And, um, it's different, but I do that in accord with high integrity or something like that. And then somebody might be like, Hmm, that sounds interesting. I always thought that that was such and such, or I haven't known anybody like that and being curious about that, leaning in and saying, tell me more. Because with somebody who's confident, then it's like, oh, there's something interesting here that I'd like to learn about. So it's about approach. It's about confidence in um, presentation. If you're going to go and ask the boss, you know, why not me for this raise, then um, there's also this thing called power posing. It was, um, uh, it was not Amy Cuddy. But her stuff is incredible too. Or was it? I cannot remember. But if you will uh, do an internet search or YouTube or I believe it might have even been a TED talk. But I can't remember if it might have been Amy Cuddy. <laughs> C-U-D-D-Y. But she's either the one that did the toxic shame. Actually, I think that's Brene Brown. Anyways, the two of them are, in, are incredible, both. But the power posing, it says that we can literally um, take the, um, what do you call that? Jeez, these words, braining. Uh, you can take the chemical composition through saliva tests before and after doing certain poses, and there is a, a balance between cortisol and testosterone, whether male or female, it does not matter. Testosterone is the one that brings up assertion, the divine masculine from within, um, confidence, courage, and the will to act, where cortisol is the stress hormone. And that one is going to tell the body that we're stressed. It, it constricts, it restricts. It um, slows the metabolism. It puts us in fight, flight, freeze mode. And when one goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. And so by simply doing like this and curling in on the self, you're curling in to almost protect the chakra systems from approach. But when you draw your shoulders up and back, correcting the spinal 
orientation side to side up and down maybe do a little bit of that flow to get yourself going and rolling the shoulders up and away from the neck in a comfortable manner at first it's going to feel a little foreign but in time over a few however long then it becomes more natural your shoulders will have a greater range of motion and what this does is it starts that that shift in our body's chemistry where all of a sudden we are, it affects the way that we think, the way that we speak. And are we going to stumble over our words? Well, when cortisol is the leader, absolutely. We're going to be, or if we're not stumbling, then we're operating from those preconceived lower notions. But so power posing, check that out. There's um, also hands on hips, feet slightly apart. This is also known as a challenger defender. Um, stance from one of my books, this Eastern Body, Western Mind by Anodea Judith, which maybe I'll take a little tidbit from that and post later. But oh, I meant to show you that. Ding. Uh, so also sitting with your feet up on the desk, um, a number of other things. So utilize that. It only takes, I believe, three minutes of various power posing, affirmations or whatever to create a chemical change in the body. And in the same way, we can start thinking positively and it doesn't need to be like, oh, well, I didn't get that promotion. I'm positive this is where I belong. <laughs> it's not about that. Thinking positively is like, I could ask for that, but it's already been done. I could also go and find a new job because I am positive, I am employable, I am highly skilled, I am highly sought after, and they are lucky to have me. And if they don't feel lucky to have me, then I can find somebody who will be. Right? There you go. So anything else? Allowance? Frequency shift. Hell yeah. That's a heart-based frequency shift that's reaching into the heart, or excuse me, the heart is reaching into the throat and really using the voice to push something to the forefront and it's shifting our view of self. Oh, I'm running out of time. Earth, fearless, being fearless in our manifestation. Um, I'm seeing an individual lying down. Um, interesting, somebody looking down from above, somebody in spirit perhaps guiding, looking over. There's the voice card coming over prosperity. Use your voice to advocate and use your choice to allow yourself to shift into this whole new dimension because it's it's time for you to be the, the successful one. Ah, time. Thanks, guys, for watching. Intuition coming over perception and assistance over remembrance. Remember that you are guided. You are guarded. You are protected. You are loved. And over coherence, there's shifting. So we got frequency shift and shifting. Shifting our understanding about the situation and taking our powerful voice and applying it, bringing that 